how do we make the train stop? And the doors are all locked. Everything's <laughs> shut. And I'm expecting something like, you cannot stop this train. <laughs> it is the souls of those who have departed. Right. You cannot escape death. But instead he's like, oh, just use those controls <laughs> over there. Just pull the lever and it'll stop. You can get off. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny. I couldn't believe it. Welcome back to the State of the Ark podcast. My name is Mike. And my name's Kason. And we're here to talk about Final Fantasy VI again. We, we are. You like this game because we're going to be talking about it for a long time, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's harder for us to actually get to the places that we uh, want to each time. Yeah, we just left off, right? Well, we kind of went through the Leap River section where you fight Ultros at the end of that, but I didn't know. We kind of went a little quickly through that. I don't know if we missed anything that you had. Yeah, I did. To just say. Uh, when the. Um, when uh, what'd you call it? when the Gestalian soldiers like infiltrate the uh-huh. uh, cave mm-hmm. um, and the attack is about to happen right and you're supposed to escape down the river um, you can go around and talk to some of the um, the what are they called returners. returners and there's this one guy who's laying in bed and he is he might have been the guy who was injured who came in I can't really remember um, but basically he's like sleep talking about how the empire is invading. Oh, yes, I remember this. But, yes. But it's like not real, but you so you're walking into the room, you're just getting the stuff of the room, but before you leave, he's like, "Oh, the empire's invading." And you yeah. like freak out. It's funny cuz the empire does invade yeah, technically. Right. But uh this is before that happens, I think. And then um it's like, "Oh no." And then he goes, "Oh," and then he falls like, back, goes asleep. back to sleep. Yeah. I thought that was actually I thought it was really funny. It did. Yeah. It made me laugh out loud. Yeah. Yeah, good catch on that one. It was <clears throat> and, a good little uh funny little dialogue don't miss it don't miss it (laughs) um then uh rafting down the river is great it reminds me a ton of mario rpg and the midas Mm -hmm. river Mm -hmm. right yep but also i'm talking about how this is the breaking of the fellowship yep right and it's on a river you know next to a waterfall that's like the river anduin so you know yep uh there's actually another lord of the rings reference i hope we get to it (laughs) a little, little bit later on um but i'll definitely bring it up uh, this is definitely intentional. It had to have been intentional. Um, and then I, gosh, where did we leave off? Was that it right that after? Was it. Ultra, so Ultros? basically we just got up through where they fought Ul- Ultros and, and then, um, Sabin tries to attack him underwater yes. and gets separated and he's so like, good. He looks <laughs> unconscious as he's like floating <laughs> down the river. <laughs> you, you end up seeing that unconscious floating Sabin <laughs> like three more times. <laughs> it's so, I love it. It's so good. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, then we get that black screen and the Moogle who is kind of like the narrator ish. Yeah. Well, this is Mog. I believe this well, is yes. actually Mog who will, I mean, he's like on the cover of the game from, right? the, <laughs> from the cover of, you know, Mog, the, <laughs> like the main one. character. Um, yeah. So, uh, a lot of people <laughs> have got a lot of comments on being like, what do you mean? Yeah. Play through the phantom train part. We, we should there probably clarify splits. this. Do I, do the Phantom I, I Train pretty one last? Mu- I pretty much <laughs> I always do that one last because yeah, the other two are really short. Exactly, like, this really one's short. The longest one, like Terra's uh, Terra. I guess it's technically Bannon's um, scenario is is like basically nothing happens. They just get to the river and you walk to Narsh. Very short, and they have some dialogue with Arvis, and that's it. And that's that. And then Locks is pretty short. It's really yeah, fun though. I guess it could be a little longer depending on how Walks long it a takes you to figure out how to get clothes. I got caught a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I got caught a few times. I had to, uh, <laughs> and it puts you back anyways. We'll talk about it. But this would yeah. be particularly playing towards the end of uh, Sabin. Sabin? Sabin? Yeah. I say Sabin, but I Sabin. think Sabin's pretty common I too will. for as far as what people assume okay. it's pronounced as. But uh, So we get to the end of Sabin scenario. That's the one with the Phantom Train. So Yeah. Play I, all the other ones as well, yeah. I guess. So if you haven't done it yet, stop, play the other ones, and then, you know, keep watching. Yeah, what what I was intending there was play through all three scenarios. Like, just do them all. <laughs> yes. So that's yeah, what yeah. we're going to be talking about today, for sure. Um, I assume we'll probably get a little past that, but I always assume that, and it ends up not being true. So we'll just see, have to see. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Let me see what this script assumes is going to be first here. <laughs> well, I, what think did you assu- think, I think it assumes Bannon. And, what did and you Tara, think of this yeah. whole thing? You've got this darkness, right? You got Mog showing up. You got the three different groups that you could follow, and you mm-hmm. get to pick which one, sort of choose your own adventure style. Yeah, right. Uh, what did you think about that presentation, just in general? 
I mean, uh, aside from the kind of theatrical look to it, like yes. the, the the lights going dark with the spotlight kind of look. Yeah, I um, love it. I mean, it, it kind of does continue to sort of establish this idea that there's not like one person who's necessarily yeah. the main protagonist of the game, right? Like mm -hmm. all of the characters get sep uh, kind of go their separate ways or have moments even later in the game where you'll kind of pick and choose uh, who gets paired with who and where they go. Yeah. And so um, I, I don't know. They hadn't really done this before in Final Fantasy. Like in Final I Fantasy IV, so. the, the party gets separated in particular. But you just follow one. Right. And then you meet up later. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You do Mostly you're just following Cecil. Yeah. Wherever Cecil is, that's pretty much like your POV. Right. So... I kind of like that, that it sort of reinforces like each character um, has their own story and that story is just as important as the other ones. So um, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's super cool. I, yeah. I really, really liked it. Who did you pick first? I usually do Bannon. Yes, because it's the first, shortest. Yeah. And then I'll do Locke second and then Perfect. Then third. It's good. We both went in the same order, which means <laughs> we're not going to be all screwed up with our notes. So yeah, that's good. Should be in the correct correct order. So. Okay. Um, let's see here. So they all kind of, we, we, we already went over how Sabin gets separated and Bannon, I think even in the advanced script a little bit, Edgar seems to think he's going to be fine. That, that mm. Sabin's going to be fine. He's not that worried about it. So it's mostly Bannon who was worried, right? Yeah, well, I cause he says, uh, maybe not. Are one, you sure Bannon, was. sir? Uh, oh, Bannon he'll be fine. Care. Bannon says, so oh, Bannon he'll be fine. Care. And then Edgar says, are you sure? And then he's ah. like, you're his brother. You should know better than any of us. Any second out here, flop back onto the raft, right as rain. And, and but that's when he's underwater fighting. Yeah, yeah. And then he, he pops doesn't. out <laughs> somewhere else. way off. And <laughs> Edgar in this version, the advanced version of the script says, think he missed the onto the raft part. And he starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so mostly just Tara then, who's like yeah, actually like, concerned about this guy. Oh my gosh. Because she starts, she's with three well, exclamation marks. She doesn't know him. Like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't know him as well. So she's just like, no way. And then Edgar says in this version, Sabin, you're on your own now. <laughs> they just like <laughs> float away. So, uh, yeah. So they trust his abilities, it seems. Um, yeah, let's see here. Actually, I only have three notes for this whole section. For the Bannon? For Bannon, yeah. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Here, here's then. my three notes. First note, got to sneak through that cave. <laughs> my second note, <laughs> that, wow, there's a den of Moogles. Now, the den of Moogles yeah. is pretty fun, yeah. right? I mean, there's not you anything go, to do there. Yeah, talk to them. But yeah, there's all the Moogles. Oh, cool. And it's one of the people in, I think it's Narsh, mentions, oh, the Moogles live in the caves, mm. you know? Like, they help us sometimes. Oh, cool. Good to know. Um, and then this very last line. So when Edgar does show up in Dinarsh and it's like, okay, let's figure this out, right? Um, Edgar tells Arvis, who is the old man that Tara stayed at yes, his house. Yes, right. right, Arvis is his name. Um, Edgar tells him that Esper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, that's all I got. So when you try to sneak in, like when you try to just go straight into Narsh, mm -hmm. like a bunch of guards... We'll like oh, meet yeah. up with you. You kind of have to and go they back like, around. And yeah. they like try to explain. I think Edgar tries first and then they like punch him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then right. like Bannon's like, hold up. <laughs> and he tries to go explain. They like punch him too. Like get that witch yeah. out of here. Like we don't want anything to do with her. Yes. So you have to go around through the like cave door that Locke had told her not to forget about mm -hmm. with the little switch on it that like opens like the yeah. rock wall yeah. and you go through there. So anyway, um, I thought that was kind of funny. Like they just are not going to listen at all. Right. So Arvis says, Bannon, King Edgar, Edgar. Oh, and Tara too. So I had had some questions or we had speculated a little bit about who Arvis is oh, right, um, yeah, yeah. and how, I don't know, maybe he had worked for the empire before he knew, seemed mm -hmm. to know about slave crowns. I think we get a little bit more context for him in this scene. He seems to. I, I'm I feel a little bit more like he's probably natively from Narsh now. Okay. Um so Bannon says, Arvis, how are things uh here in Narsh or how do they stand? He says, same as always, the town's neutral. I've tried to convince them to side with the Paterners, but no use. Of course, maybe with you and uh the King of Figaro here, Edgar says, How are the townspeople? Oh, that's why I got confused. Because it was probably translated wrong. <laughs> as as usual. 
Because in, in the SNES version, Edgar says, how are your people? Oh. He says specifically, oh, how are your people? And, and in this version, he says, how are the townspeople? So it made me think hmm. that Arvis was from Narsh because of that. But I don't. Ah. in this version, it doesn't seem to be that way. So Arvis says, everyone's been a little on edge since the Esper was discovered. Banna says, we believe Terra may be able to help us get answers to our questions about the Esper. And Arvis says, well, the townspeople, again, in the other one, he says, my people. So the townspeople are quite curious about it as well. If we approach them in the right way, there's a good chance they'll agree to let uh, her see it. Uh, it's like, well, mm. what's the right way? Because Bannon and Edgar <laughs> both tried. <laughs> they were not going to listen. So That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and then Edgar says, uh, that Esper is going to save us or dig us an early grave, which we you, yep. you had kind of touched on. So, um Basically, the, this scenario, there's not really much to it other than they're trying to convince the people of Narsh. Their plan is to try to let them understand uh, the Empire is coming for this thing, and we need to see if we can get some important information about Espers, and this girl might be able to do that. Um, we had also sort of briefly talked about how, you know, Arvis could say something like this town is strong enough to stand up to the empire, but they don't do it. You know, they won't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how that doesn't make sense if three Magitek armors walk in and just trash <laughs> everything, but maybe that was yeah. their first encounter with such a thing. Somebody mentioned that possibility. You know, maybe, um, maybe that's the reason why at this point they would be able to approach them with that and be like, Hey, you guys really aren't ready for, for the empire yeah. to come marching in here with these things. So, we gotta we gotta figure some out. So that's that's their plan. Their plan is to have Terra talk to the Esper. Okay, and that's that. Then that we is got that. Locke. All right. So um, I like this section quite a bit. It, it's this is something Final Fantasy games um, used to do really really well during yeah. this era. Um, I think RPGs of this type in general can tend to start feeling very r repetitive. In, in terms of gameplay yeah. uh, pretty quickly. You yeah. fight lots and lots of battles against a lot of really similar enemy groupings. You mm -hmm. kind of get, okay, this is what, you know, what spells or what abilities I have that are going to kind of be successful in this area. You just kind of repeat them over and over and over again. Right, yeah. um, it, it can be really easy to, as a designer, I guess, to kind of fall into this idea that, you know, you, you take your, your, player to a new area you maybe introduce them to a few new abilities or whatever and then you take them through a long dungeon and then you just kind of repeat that over and over yeah. and over again right. um well what these final fantasy games did really well is they would they would kind of mix up how you interacted with the game in intervals that made a lot of sense pacing wise so great examples of that would be like uh even just at the very beginning of the game, using the Moogles uh, to fight yeah, in that, that was scene. Fun. That was yeah. just like a way of mixing it up so it doesn't feel quite the same as always. So you're like positioning them and trying not to let them get past you. It's like, oh, this is yeah. an interesting new way of playing the game. Um, well, in this part with Locke, you know, there's kind of, they do that again. It's like, it's not just a dungeon and you're controlling Locke through it. Yeah. You have to try to figure out how do I get past these guards, right? And the key to it is that he's a thief. So you got to steal merchant clothing yeah. so you can get past this way and then steal guards clothing so you can get past this way. Yeah. And you kind of make your way through the town switching like costumes or yeah. disguises. Um and uh, I, I don't know. I just really liked it. I thought it was really clever. I, I like that you have to get into a battle with the yes. merchant and use the steel command. Yeah, yeah. And then the guy's just like naked. And he's just like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, so funny. Goes off the screen. It's charming. It's fun. Uh, it's another sort of like layer of abstraction like we've been talking about, right? Um, yeah. Using the gameplay to tell the story. Um, and it's not like a super long sequence or anything. No. Um, but there's some really good story that comes here too when uh, Locke kind of gets through the town and makes his way and finds that Celeste uh, is being held there uh, as a prisoner. Celeste is, um, well, she, she tells us in the scene that she was a general of the Castellan yeah. Empire, yeah. of the army. But if you go back to previous scenes where we've seen the Empire, you would see her there. So it's like 
her, mm. General Leo, who we meet in the next scenario with Sabin, mm. and then Kefka were kind of all there behind the Gestalt when he was like mm, giving his speech. Nice. So like Celeste was like that high up. Mm. So anyway, really kind of interesting development there. But before we get into that scene with her, were there any notes that you took just kind of on lock sneaking through or no, any of the NPCs I or anything loved like it. that. It was so fun though. It was, yeah. it was just an absolute blast. Cause, um, it, it, this, this kind of stuff when it happens, it's just, it's just classic. It's so fun. You, you get caught, you go back to the same place when, uh, just kind of like you always wake up in the same spot and it's like, Oh, got to find some new clothes. Yep. And you do it multiple times. I probably took, uh, 12 or so different outfits from people throughout this whole session. Um, it was really fun. <clears throat> Uh, I absolutely loved it. But then there's a stranger here. There's a person, an older man. We talk to him. And he says, I don't like strangers. Bring me some cider and maybe I'll talk to you. <laughs> right? I love that. That's just how video games used to yeah, be. It's how they right? used to be. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, and then you talk to him again. <laughs> I, I, maybe that would make more sense. It, it's funnier because it's cider. But if he's like, yes. bring me some booze. Well, but it like, was it, in Japanese. It would have been in Japanese, Yes, it was right? sake. Yeah. In the Japanese, he says, I don't like strangers. Bring me some sake and then we'll yeah, talk, right? right? Right, And I don't know. It's just fun. <laughs> I, I really like it. But then you talk to him again and without the cider, right? And he says, what? No cider? <laughs> and like, you have to give him cider. And he used to work for, was it the rich person at the top of town or something like that? Or I think that was it. He used to work oh, for the rich guy. Um, yeah. somebody. Anyways, uh, you kind of need his information, right? And he right. has a secret passcode. Yep. And then so you go and you get in the sake, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, thanks. The secret code is." Oh, I, I don't forgot. remember it. Yeah. <laughs> it's <so laughs> it <bad>. forgets, <laughs> and, it's like, and so you have to like guess what it for his uh, kid, his grandkid, or his yeah. nephew that's downstairs or whatever. <laughs> you yeah. just like guess what the password is. It was so funny. Was really I, funny. I loved it so much. Um. And then, um, I mean, we kind of already talked about in a previous episode about the rich guy who, um, is feeling remorse for having like sold out the town. Right. Uh, yeah. So that happens up top. Yeah. We yeah. kind of don't need North to go Park. over that again, but I really yeah. liked that. I thought that that was yeah. well done. That was Little really NPC interaction. Uh, we also, we show up and we talk to a merchant. And the merchant in town, he says he's out of merchandise. And then we have two options. One says, I'm going to pound your face. <laughs> <laughs> and the other says, guess I'm out of luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's different in this one. <laughs> oh, is it? But it's say? really funny because it does feel like it comes completely out of nowhere. Like <laughs> he goes up and talks to a guy and it's just like, I, I don't have you know, Anywhere. anything to sell you right yeah. now. And, and Locke's <laughs> reaction, I'm going to pound your face. It's so it's, good. It feels so random, <laughs> but it it's does. really funny. Um, but it is different. Let's see if I can find it. Anyway, I can't find it. Okay. It's, oh. it's not, it's not, I'm going to pound your face. No. Like it is in <laughs> the SNES version. So. I thought that was so good though. And yeah. then uh, we just go around stealing, alternating people's clothes. And this was the most fun I've had playing a video game in a long time. Yeah. Um, I had an absolute blast. I wrote down in my notes that I feel young again because <laughs> this is how games <laughs> used to be. <laughs> like you would just, it was, there was a ridiculous aspect to these games um, that was mixed in to the dramatic and to the clever, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it was always done so well. And I, I really miss it. Games don't do this as much or when they do, it just comes across differently now. Mm. And it's just not the same when you've got, when it's less abstract, when it's more like realistic, like, no, this is literally exactly what's happening as you see it. <laughs> it, it doesn't land as much yeah, uh, the it's same. And so you really need that, that abstract like art in order to, to pull work. that off. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So basically I, I'm just up to this, the scene with Celeste uh, in this, okay. in the cell. So this is actually different between the SNES version and yeah. the Game Boy Advance version. Well, well, and in the Japanese too, there, there, it's less clear um, that they're referring to a a woman, or they're talking about oh the general's locked up or whatever. It's oh. it's not as it's not as clear until you see her that it's like oh oh it's a woman. Uh, well, whereas in this one, it's like she's in the they they use those you know yeah like pronouns. What um what I was referring to though is that they actually censored the scene in the later version of the game. The so later? in the Super Nintendo version, the the guards like actually beating her up like, yes he's like punching yeah her yeah I saw as that. she's like chained to the wall hmm. in the super nintendo in the game boy advance version they took that part out where he's not punching her like that hmm. um 
I have heard that the reason was because there was something like some event or, or you know something that was national news a kidnapping or something like that that oh. had happened in Japan mm-hmm. and in order to be like I don't I don't know if that's true though it's just, just like mm-hmm. a rumor but in order to be sensitive to that they it was the game was being released around the same time and so they like took that part out um, but yeah, they, uh, in mm-hmm. the Game Boy Advance version, the guards are not like punching her like that. Interesting. This, this goes back to what we were talking about with, uh, Metal Gear Solid though, where <laughs> this, in the Cycle Mantis fight, you're literally like, just like uh-huh. beating the fetch out of, uh, Meryl, <laughs> right? <laughs> Cause she's being mind controlled. That's right. It's like, I don't think this would work if they remade this game. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Uh, it's crazy. but it's kind of a similar. I mean, even in this game, which is like, you know, a freaking, Super Nintendo RPG, they felt the need yeah. to take out the guards striking her physically. Mm. Uh, and this was released in, I don't know, maybe 2005, the Game Boy Advance version. That the Game so, Boy Advance version came out? Th- th- five or six, uh, maybe 06. Mm. But anyway, it just it, it made me think of that. How I was like, yeah, I don't know if Metal Gear Solid <laughs> repaid if they would. I mean, maybe they would, but uh, it would be sensitive. Subject. It just wouldn't be. It wouldn't be the same. <laughs> it would feel weird. That's for sure. And especially because it'll be like a 4K, you know, a million, I know. billion polygons. <laughs> like, it'll look so real. <laughs> you, like, that, see her that, bruises as know, you're, like, that, punching her. That really does affect <laughs> things, right? Like, having a pit, two pixels, like, punch each other <laughs> is way more palatable than at literally seeing what the, you know, the reality of the potential reality of the situation like that. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I, I think somebody on Discord uh, has an answer to this from a top yes, slattery interview. Yes, there's a interview. rating. It's a rating thing. There were some changes that were made to this version of the game, one of which was the removal of the scene where Celeste was being tortured. Can you shed some light on that for mm. us? And then Slattery says, I remember after Final Fantasy VI Advance came out, a lot of people were asking why the scene had been removed. Almost immediately, this explanation arose that there had been some sort of recent kidnapping incident. Okay, so it was true. Well, in Japan. Wait, but keep reading. Oh, uh, that people were sensitive about. It spread like wildfire. Interesting thought, aside from the fact that no such thing happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly misinformation on the internet becomes accepted as fact. That's so freaking true, dude. Like, yeah. You, almost Google everything you read. Google becomes less useful as I time know, goes on. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> I was not involved in the decision to remove this scene. It was cut from the uh, entire game, not just the localized releases. But understand that the original Final Fantasy VI was created before the Japanese ratings board, Cero, mm. um, even existed. Violence is rated very strictly in Japan. Oh, really? Much the same way that sexual content is in the U.S. Okay. Presumably, they wanted a Cero A rating for the Game Boy Advance version in Japan, and you cannot get an A rating if a game depicts violence against a restrained human being. And A, I guess, would be more for younger audiences, right? Probably, yeah. Hmm. That's funny. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, uh, I doubted that as soon as I read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe. But it's maybe, like, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, okay. uh, so that's the reason why. There you go. While, um, she, while she's chained up. She reveals that the people of Do- Dorma, Doma, Dorma, Doma, Doma, are going to be poisoned. So they're torturing her as a traitor, right? But she's yeah. kind of saying some info, and they're like, "Shut up! Don't say anything!" Right? Yeah. It's not entirely clear exactly what she did to be labeled a traitor, or is it? Um, I don't know if it's like out- said outright, but obviously she. Oh, she was told to do something, and she just didn't do it. And well, it could have been this poisoning Doma, right? I mean, I don't know if she would have been sent there, but obviously she found out yeah. that Kefka was planning to do this and yeah. she was not going to stand for it. Right. So whatever she did to sort of like resist that order, I, the thing is, I don't know if it's an order necessarily. Um, there's a part of me that thinks it could be, and maybe that'll be revealed like explicitly later. I don't remember right now. I feel like Kefka just did this because Kefka's crazy. Yeah. Um, but well, there's another yeah, part of yeah. me that feels like uh, maybe, maybe Emperor Gestal told him like to do that, but like mm-hmm. keep it on the DL and like not I make it I took it, it like, more of like Kefka's own thing, but. That's how I read it too. I don't know. So the fact that Celeste mm-hmm. seems to know this and maybe tried to report it or something yeah. like that. 
Um, they don't and, have whistleblower protection laws <laughs> probably in the not. Gestalian Empire. Probably not. Yeah. So my guess would be it had something to do with her trying to report or um, stop this poisoning of Doma that got her uh, thrown thrown into this dungeon here. And yeah. Why they're... I don't, I, anyway. That's what I assumed it was. Um, so yeah, she says, Kefka's planning to poison every last man, woman, and child in the kingdom of Doma. And the guard just says, shut up. You know, um, run that mouth of yours while you still can. Your execution's tomorrow. So she's being executed. Mm, yeah, this isn't right. just like, that's oh, right. you're being detained until you can have tribunal. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah, you were whistleblowing or something, and therefore that, you're going to be executed. See, that would suggest that this was all the way up, up top, right? That this came. Yeah, from the, from that's the that's top. why I don't know. Yeah, kind of interesting <laughs> for sure. Hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know, and I don't know if it's really ever answered. I mean, again, yeah. it's been a long time since I replayed this game, but I don't remember there being any, like, text in the game that sort of says, oh, yeah, Gestal was the one who told Kefka to do this or not. I yeah. mean, obviously, Leo doesn't know that, because um, Leo tries to tell Kefka, right. like, you That's know, right. don't do anything rash, don't do anything crazy, just, like, yeah. wait till I get back. I gotta go, like back to the empire but like you know remember these people are human beings just like you and me yeah so leo's not in on it uh celeste was against it yeah and then you've only got kefko those are the the three people who were there with gestal in the cutscene. so the, i'm guessing mm. those are the three highest ranking people yeah that would, outside yeah. of gestal himself obviously the emperor so i don't know i'm not sure uh is kind of the long answer to that but it's it read to me the way that i read it or the way I've always seen it was that Kefka was just a wild card and he just decided he was going to kill all those people because that's what yeah, he does. Because that's what he does. So, but somehow she, of life, right? somehow she figured it out. So the guards, I think one of the guards leaves and the other one kind of falls asleep over in the corner or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so we're able to come in and rescue Celeste. And the first thing that she says <laughs> is... Aren't you a little short for a <laughs> yep. soldier? <laughs> like, yep. Star Wars, thank you very much. Straight up. It, it, this yeah. really makes me wonder how Woolsey missed that it's supposed to be Biggs and Wedge. Biggs and Wedge, I know. I can't it, believe I that. don't get it. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, crazy. obviously, there's Star Wars references all over the thing. Like, I don't know how you missed that, but okay. So then Locke says that Celeste reminds him of someone, right? It's mm -hmm. very vague and ambiguous on that point. Um, we'll we find out about that pretty soon Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, wait, why in the world does that say this? Oh, yeah. Um, what? Oh, I'm on Sabin's now. Oh, okay, so that's, that was your, my last, last note. that's your last my note. My last note is that last Locke note says for Celeste. Celeste reminds him of someone. Yeah. Dot, dot, so dot, 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 dot. anyways, he tells her he's with the Returners. Um, she says, I was general Celeste. Now I'm nothing but a traitor. So let's get mm -hmm. going. She's like, well, you would take me with you. It's surprised, you know, like you're a returner and you're going to take a former general of the empire with you. Right. Um, I appreciate it. But if, even if you get me out, you wouldn't be able to protect me. I'm better off waiting here for the executioner. At least that way I'll keep my pride, my honor. Ooh, right? that's um, he says, I'll protect you. Trust me. You'll be fine. She says, wait. The soldier might have something. I loved this. The soldier might have something uh, that can help us on him. Because th this was like, again, <laughs> yeah. another example of like the kind of humor, the style of humor that was so common in at this time in games. Yeah. So there's two guards in there <clears throat> with her. The one guy turns to the other and says like, keep an eye on her. Like, don't let her escape or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I could go like, I don't remember exactly what he says. He says he could go a oh, long three, time without three, sleep. Three days and three nights. Yeah, I could go like three days without sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then it yeah. cuts outside to where the guard leaves. Locke jumps down and goes inside. I'm guessing probably 30 seconds have passed. The yeah. dude is like completely out. He's just like asleep immediately. <laughs> he was immediately. <laughs> so th there's something here. Um, the fact that it's three days. <laughs> I, I took it to be, I thought that was funny, but um, I took it to be something along the lines of the, the you know, Jesus Christ in the tomb and three days. Right? Oh, that that's what he was talking that about. He's like, oh, I would, I'd be able to stand for three days, right? But then also, anyways, a reference to falling asleep right away. 
um, with the Garden of Gethsemane. That's a thing. I don't even know if that's in the original Japanese. It very well may not be. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like when you, when somebody says like three days or three days and three nights, it's always like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> Especially when it comes to like guarding a prisoner or something like yeah, that. What, what did he say that's in this funny. version? One uh, of them says three days, and I did look up keep, the other one. Keep a close eye on her. Yes, sir. I could stand guard for days without sleep. He says. Yeah, and that's the, the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah. In Tom, but let's find what the Japanese says. And I am currently on lock, so let's get the number three. Ooh, I don't see it. It may not have happened. Okay, keep an eye on her. I can go okay. for days. Here it is. Yeah, yes, sir. I could stand guard three days and nights without sleep. And that's in the Japanese. That's directly from the Japanese. From the Japanese, it says three days, three nights. In the Japanese, it says specifically three days and three nights. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I think that's great. I think it's fascinating. (laughs) Um, So anyway, uh, then he's like fast asleep. So she's saying he might have something interesting on him, right? And he's like sleeping. So she sneaks up and they, they get the clock key, which is what allows them to escape out of this, you know, underground... Uh, basement thing that they're in the dungeon cellar or whatever yeah. in the rich guy's house um so he's sleeping and he and uh you, you go up to take it and the guy gets up and just says more, more soup and mumble, <laughs> yeah, mumble. i thought yeah he was totally waking up but it was just like he's just mumbling nonsense in his sleep i thought that was so funny more soup and some bread too <laughs> just like he gets up too he yeah like he stands up he like stands up more soup and, and then he's yeah, some bread back. too that's so funny. Goes back to sleep. Really good. Yeah. Um, so why are you helping me, she asks him as they're exiting. You remind me of someone, as you brought up. Yeah. What does it matter anyway? I'm, I'm helping you because I want to. And uh, they kind of just take off. Oh, they, then they have to go through the cave uh, to go back to Narsh. So they have to go back through the cave over towards Figaro, the desert. And then they have oh, to yeah. go north from there. So they, they fight a boss battle there against the tunnel armor. And this is where you get the um, tutorial of her runic ability. So mm. when she casts runic, she can like absorb magic. Uh, like like mm, it's when right. it's cast, she'll just like absorb it and it doesn't hurt oh, anybody. Yeah, there, there is something about her. We, we do learn some stuff a little bit later, but she is capable of doing magical things. Um, but not the way that Terra is necessarily. Yeah, it's a little different than yeah, Terra. There's a different thing, and it's um, more, uh, at least in terms of her backstory, it's, it's a more, a little more artificial. Yeah. Like she wasn't born naturally with the ability no. to do magic. She was kind of mm, infused, modified, yeah, infused with magical, exactly, magic. infused yeah. to be able to do magic and things like this. Um, I actually, this was an interesting note. I think that in the SNES version, when it when it does her little introduction, where it goes dark. And it's like Celeste and it gives you background on her. It says specifically like genetic modification, which uh, I don't yeah, think yeah. it says in this version. Oh, really? Let me hmm. actually find out where it says that because it's, it reads a little different, but I thought it was interesting. I thought maybe they were tipping their hat a little too soon with like revealing parts of Celeste's like the game spoiling itself mm. <laughs> almost. Mm. Uh, let's see. It's got to be back here. Okay. So in this version, it's a Magitek knight forged by the Empire and tempered in battle. None have oh. ever truly known the woman beneath the general's guise. That's the advanced version. And in the Super Nintendo version, it says specifically genetically modified or something really? along those <laughs> oh lines. Gosh. So it's pretty different, like the way you would read that character based on that because forged by the empire and tempered in battle is not the same thing. It's not. And it, and it, <laughs> it, it leaves it open to interpretation. Like yeah. what exactly is it trying to say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to see what it says in Japanese because, um, yeah, if I could find that's, it. I mean, those two versions are very different. And I would think that the it, it, story wise, in terms of what we should know about Celeste up to this point, you may have to play with the editing on this in case I'm spoiling something. I don't think I am, but in case I am. Oh, I don't think so, um, but... Yeah, it just seems weird to say genetically modified, but maybe that's what it says in Japanese. Uh, Ritaru is saying something interesting here on Discord, though. He says, the SNES describes Celeste as having a spirit as pure as snow. That's right. Yes, it does say that. Yes, that's which right. Which is something of an informed attribute, given that she's ostensibly the general of a conquering empire. <laughs> this is actually no what they're what they're trying to say is she's a virgin that's what they're trying to say <laughs> right 
Is it the Here it part, is. The Found green it. part okay. right there, yeah. So the Japanese uh, would say something more along the lines of a battle sorceress produced artificially through imperial special produced education. Produced artificially. Produced artificially through imperial special education. None have looked upon the true self as a woman. Whoa, sorry. None have looked upon, none have seen her true face as a woman. That's what it would say more mm. um, in the Japanese. Um, and then this is a general who's fought countless battles. So, yeah. So he, he kind of translated from artificially produced to be yeah. genetically modified. It sounds similar. I actually still prefer the Game Boy Advance one. The Game yeah. Boy Advance one, it, it obfuscates it a little bit. Yeah. Makes it not, I don't know, it, it leaves more mystery for the character. Yeah. You'll learn more about her later. But right? then the SNES says, product of genetic engineering, battle-hardened Magitek Knight with a spirit as pure as snow. Yeah. But what this says, I think um, Tom, sorry, Tom, I think uh, what... Tom, Tom Slattery or nope, Ted other Woolsey? Man. Ted Woolsey. I think he probably interpreted the uh, none have looked upon her true face as a woman. Yeah. That is implying that that she's like a virgin that basically everyone around her sees her as a man that nobody has ever like like seen a her as a woman. situation well this happens a lot in in japan and in um korean stuff as well that like the concept of seeing someone as a woman it, it, it's a it's saying like whether or not you're attracted to them or whether or not you like do you see me as a woman no you're just one of the guys right um that's more or less what this is saying that people look at her and they and they they see her basically as a as a like a man <laughs> and yeah. they follow all of her instructions and She's a battle-hardened soldier, and it, when it says none have ever seen her true self, as her true face as a woman, um, then um, Wolseley shows up and says, oh, it means she's a virgin, and he puts up this um, spirit pure as snow. And there is a connection there in the Japanese. The, like, what's interesting possibly. is that in the retranslation in advance here, none have ever truly known the woman beneath the general's guise. Similar. Right, like similar. That, that's... Obviously, much closer, I think, to the, to the intended Japanese. Japanese meaning of that, which well, is that she was just one of the guys in the army. Yes. But but then the word none, though, zero, right? Yeah. Nobody has ever seen her other than as, like, this powerful warrior. Yeah. And then yeah. that would be because she's been, as it says here, forged she, and yeah. tempered she, she by was, the Empire. Re-education. She was made to do this. There's some sort of re-education is what it said in the uh, Japanese, Special right? education, and that would be yeah. this line here in the Japanese. Sorry, that would be this line here in the Japanese. Please stop. There's a <laughs> couple things here. Um, artificially by the empires, yeah, special education. So, mm. so anyway, interesting uh, way that you can, there's kind of each version there has something a little in different fact, you can take. They're all quite different. They're all a little different yeah. from each other. So interesting. Okay, um, that's all I've got for lock scenario. Anything else for okay, you no. before we move on to the big one here? I love this part. Um, yeah, so we're at uh, Sabin's part now. Yeah. Here we are at Sabin's scenario. So he wakes up. What dire fate has befallen Sabin, who leapt from the, leapt from the raft after the fight with Ultros? Um, so he washes ashore. The first thing you see is just like a little cabin there on the world map because I'm kind of pointing you to go there yeah. um, because Sabin's alone. He needs a party member <laughs> for this, uh, at least up to the point where you recruit Cyan. So uh, mm. you, you go there and Shadow is kind of sitting there with his, with his dog, right? Um, there's a man there who tells him that the, the Empire has set up a camp just beyond the forest to the east. Uh, you know, Sabin's like, what are they doing there? They have their eyes set on Doma Castle. And Sabin says, so Doma's next, huh? But I need to get to Narsh mm -hmm. right away. The man says, your only road passes through Doma. Because I guess the diverging paths of the river here, one took them over in this direction where it sort of naturally fell into closer to Narsh. Closer right, to yeah. Narsh. But this one took him almost to like another side of the continent, which would require mm -hmm. him to do this really crazy journey way yeah. south and east, yeah. away from it to get to... <laughs> <laughs> well, he goes to the Veld, right? Or Basically, well, the Veld, but then there's this underwater trench that will go oh, underneath yes. the ocean and spit That's him right. out back That's where right. he wants to go. It's like, your only <laughs> road to Doma, or your only road to Narsh, this guy says, is to go the other way, is to go east. I don't know why he was saying that, unless yeah. he was thinking there'd be a port city somewhere that could get him a, a ride over. I, I don't know if this guy was referring to, you have to like... like Hold your breath and go through an underwater trench for like 
500 miles. Well, but I don't know if that guy a, was thinking that. There but. is a spectacular device that uh, helps a little bit. Yeah, you got to have like a freaking uh, diving suit. Diving suit. Anyway, I, did, I was just thinking about that now. Is that That's what this funny. guy's yeah, referring yeah, yeah. to? The only way to get to Nars from here is to go <laughs> through the trench. Through the earth. If that's what he was referring to. That's Obviously, funny. they're just pointing the, the player in that direction. Yeah, yeah. They're not probably really thinking about that, but it's just funny to think about. So you can recruit Shadow here. Um, he says the Empire was set or has set up a camp just beyond the forest of the east. Uh, what are they doing here? Says Sabin. Shadow says they have their eyes on. Oh, he says the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So Doma's next. So I'm about to get Nars right away. Your only your only road passes through Doma. Um, so when you hire him, um, he's uh, interesting because he he just basically tells you that at any point he'll leave if he feels like it. Yes. Right. Yes. And you kind of you kind of you know hire him on and then. He's just like, hey, I, I move with the wind, and if right. I don't, if I'm not feeling it, I'm out. I'm like, all death, right, death all right, is always just a step behind me. Yes, um, yes. And it's not; it doesn't start now. It starts after the Doma section is over. But there is a one in sixteen chance in any battle you encounter that he will just leave the party after that battle. No, no way. So huh. you can save. You can 16, use saves huh? to your advantage. So if you don't want him to go <laughs> until he has to leave. You can kind of hold on to him by saving the game. Interesting. But yeah, it's like mm. after the Doma scenario ends, basically, yeah, it's it's a pretty low chance, but I mean, less than 10% chance, but that he'll just pick up and take off. Mm. And that's kind of how it is, even if you recruit him later, which is why I don't tend to recruit him later after, um, I forget the name of the town. There's a town after Figaro goes under the sand. Oh, it's G Dune or... Um... Anyway, yeah, I have it written down somewhere, but yeah, I do too. Um, anyway, uh, I don't recruit him <laughs> yeah. at that point. It's just annoying. It's just like he can leave you at any point. So well, he, he's kind of expensive. Yeah. And you got to hire him at that point too. Right. So anyways, you bring shadow with you through this section. Um, so you, you arrive at the, Doma. You go to that uh, old man's like cabin. Yeah. Well. Oh, that was <laughs> it's so funny. That was really funny. Just, you show up and he's just like, "Ah, oh, finally, someone's here to fix my clock." <laughs> I love like, this. What? what are you talking about? I love this. He's like, yeah. "I've been waiting for someone to fix the clock. How long's it been broken? Oh, ten years or so." <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> like, it's, it's hilarious. It's absolutely hysterical. Yeah, I've got it here. So he's like, "Oh, you're not here for the clock? Oh, oh, well then, um, our gra- our lawn, the grass is growing too tall. You're here to cut it, aren't you?" And it's, I love it. It's so funny. And you can talk. You talk him a bunch of times, and each yeah. time he says some some other thing that he's no more lip to repair, be. man. Fix that stove on the double. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I loved funny. that. It was really funny. And then I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, you of call yourself more. a repairman, causing trouble. No child could be this mischievous. <laughs> this is worse than kids' pranks, is what it says over there. Yeah. But then the old man is like, child, ain't no child around here. Boulder dash. <laughs> I am ready for you to leave. Go on, get. I'm tossing you out into the veldt. I'd rather take a stick in the eye than deal with that guy again. <laughs> That's what, oh my gosh. Yeah, so Edgar says that, I think. Take, or Sabin says that. Take a stick Goodness, in the eye. Goodness, then you must be. You're here to fix my bed. It's squeaking <laughs> like all get out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And then I think the very last one, um, if you come back later on, I see this in the script, but you've come to fix the door, haven't you? <laughs> you have yeah. to come later on when you get a different character, but oh, that's yeah. so funny. It, it just kind of goes on and on. It's really funny. Um, okay. So once you get to the camp, uh, the first thing that plays out are a couple of, couple of soldiers who are just sort of chatting. And I, I liked this because it, it, it does a little bit to set up Kefka's standing even amongst like the ranks of the Imperial Army, right? Mm-hmm. So like none of these dudes like him. They uh, they all think he's creepy. Yeah, and it's so interesting. Weird and like they just they don't want him around. They don't want him to be yeah. the leader. Um, and it's awkward in well in, in some ways. It's so funny because these soldiers will like start gossiping amongst each other. It cle- within earshot of <laughs> Kefka, he's just in the next tent over, and yeah. the other soldiers are like, "Dude, shut up!" And he's like, yeah. "No, man, I'm sick of this. I can't believe it." And like, yeah, this is not. Uh, anyways, it's really funny. Yeah, and you know it. I, I the the thing that I like about Kefka as a villain, what kind of makes him stand out a little bit from previous villains in the series anyway, is that he's not like the, you know, the, the typical sort of like Dark Lord figure. Like, yeah, totally not. You, you've got Golbez and X-Death and, and uh, um, uh, 
from the first game. Oh my gosh, my brain's not working. Don't remember names. Don't remember names. Or I actually don't think I played that game. Final Fantasy One, dude. No, I haven't played it. I'm gonna lose my mind. How do I not know this right now? Gar Garland. Garland. Oh, Garland. Of Garland. Anyway, so you got, you know, Garland and Golbez and X Death, right? Mm -hmm. Um, even a little bit like Cloud of Darkness. Uh, or the the emperor from Final Fantasy do, they mm. they all sort of they're all sort of that almost deified like super villain dark lord you know you know embodiment of evil archetype kind of thing. Yeah. And Kafka is very very different from that. Like he does not command any respect from like the soldiers here. Right. They they. Because they're all talking about how there's rumors about how General Leo, who's the one who's actually leading here in the camp, General Leo has been called back to go, you know, back yeah. to the capital. And, oh, no, if he does that, that means Kefka is going to be in charge. And they're just like, no way. If, no it, if, if way. that happens, like, I'm going home. I'm going to leave. I'm going to, like, yeah, quit yeah. the army, mm. basically. So, like, none of them respect him. Yep. We've already had encounters with him earlier where he appeared to not be, like, a very strong character no. in, in terms of what you would um, maybe typically expect. Yeah, yeah. Um and you fight him a few times here and he's the he's fights pretty aren't long. He, he's basically just running away from you. Yeah, and you hit runs. him one time and he just goes, "Ooh." Yeah, <laughs> and well, he just in, like runs away some more. In the well, in the SNES version I played, or he, uh, Saban starts shouting, "Wait!" and he goes, "Wait, I'm not a waiter." <laughs> what, do I look like a waiter? <laughs> and then he runs away, but you he says the same line each time. It's so funny. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he's just being set up in, in a very different and, and kind of unique way, especially for this series. Um, and kind of like I was saying, maybe in the last episode or the one before that, I can't remember which one, he almost feels more like a Gilgamesh, or in this game, Ultros, which is mm. almost like a joke oh, yeah, yeah. boss that you sort of encounter multiple yeah. times, and he's not hard. It's like every time right. it just feels like a joke to fight this guy. It's just funny almost, yeah, right, yeah, more yeah. than anything. So I, I really like that they set him up this way, um, that it, he's not just despised by his enemies. He's despised even by those who should be his allies. And yep. we've seen why. I mean, we see the way he treated subordinates in the previous scene. Oh, totally, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, um, he's not well-liked at all. And it's, it's not just him, though, because, like, he doesn't, like – his boss, but nope. then his underlings don't like him. Nope. And then all the generals are not getting along either, it seems. Yep. And like, the, like nobody is connected here. Nobody likes each other. Yeah, so uh, Kefka comes out of the tent uh, where they were planning strategy or whatever they were doing. Yeah. They, they shut up real quick. Kefka says, uh, hey, you, you keeping a sharp lookout? He's like, yes, sir, Kefka, sir. What a pleasant surprise. How are you today? Like, Spare me your petty small talk. Just do your job. Don't let me catch you slacking or I'll make you regret being born, mm. you know? And then he leaves and then they start sort of gossiping again. Hmm. Like, we're going to listen to you, you pompous, like, right? right? They just so have bad. no respect for him at <laughs> all. Yeah. What's wrong with that guy anyway? It's like General Leo got all the good qualities a man could have and Kefka got stuck with the rest. The guy's like, shh, I just told you to keep it down. Stop it. How many times I got to make me say it? Got to be more careful. General Leo may be a decent man, but Kefka, that guy's twisted. Mm, yep. Um, tell me about it. And then, uh, you there, you know, we're going to storm the castle, uh, get the, we're going to, you're going to join the assault squad, get moving. Yep. Um, I really loved this. Put those two on the front line. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they go attack the castle and I love the way they animated this again. It's just really funny for kind of it was indicative because of the it's time. like it's like eight people yeah it actually reminds me a little bit of when uh in monty python and the holy grail when they're like you know let's launch a frontal assault on the castle and they run up to the castle and they're just like hitting the stone with their swords yep. like what, <laughs> what what are you doing there's like seven of them like are you you're not you're not getting anywhere <laughs> that's actually true it does it does remind me of that scene a little bit and they're like you'll see a guy kind of crawling up the and he like falls over and then he falls yeah yeah <laughs> and they're just sort of like uselessly like hitting the stone wall <laughs> <laughs> and so you know the do the doman soldiers that are sort of looking on at this they go in and to report to cyan who's yeah the general of the of doma here this is our introduction to this character so a noble warrior of a foreign land a faithful retainer to his lord and master he fears not even death that's very good cyan's awesome um 
one of my favorite characters in the game. One of the few not blonde characters in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, a very samurai looking design to the character. He yeah. talks a little bit differently too. He's got more of like an older kind of accent. Yeah. And he also, he doesn't seem to be very familiar with uh, mechanical things or with uh, machines yes. and technology. He's, he's old right? school. Yeah. He's old school. Mm. He's, he's, he lives by the sword and, uh, he doesn't uh, trifle with any of this, uh, extra stuff. Like he, he lives a very simple life and he's very yeah. disciplined. He's very good. Yeah. Um, he also has a family. Yes. You see, uh, older. I think he's one of the oldest, like main party final fantasy characters you get in the whole series. Oh, how old is he? I think he's 50 something, Whoa. which is like really old for gosh. Even thirties is like <laughs> a geezer for final fantasy. <laughs> You're like on your deathbed at 36. <laughs> yeah. This guy, of this guy, this man has evaded, evaded death. But, um, I don't know. He's he's really cool. Um, and yeah, I was actually curious about how his dialogue is written in Japanese because in Japanese it's not. They don't carry it quite as far as they do say like frog in Chrono Trigger. Yes, with no, the, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing with it. the thee and thous. He does a little bit of it, but not. Yeah. It's not like a lot like frog in Chrono Trigger. So yep. I was curious as to the form of Japanese that he uses to speak. And if it's okay. more old school samurai it is. or it is, yeah. this is very good. Um, so it, this is a very good example, right? So his first off, his name is Kayan in, Kayan. in the Japanese. Um, so for this uh, part where after it's like, Oh no, we're going to die. And then he shows up and he's like, Hey, let's, let's fight. Let's go out and, and fight them. Um, he says, if we can fell their commander, they'll surely give up. So he's volunteering to go out in the front and then, yep. you know, try to one-on-one, -on -one, try to kill the commander. Um, and then his, he says in the English, uh, in Wolseley's trans translation, he says, Let, let's give it a try, right? The Japanese says, um, iku de gozaru, iku de gozaru. Mm -hmm. That's not common in modern Japanese at all. Oh, really? Like, gozaru? Well, it's like gozaimasu, something like that, right? Uh, but it's so, so it's, you, can, you can see it and be like, oh, it's, it's in a way, it's sort of informal. But it's actually a very old way of speaking, right? Mm. Um, de gozaru would just be des or de gozaimasu or whatever. Like, de gozaimasu is very formal. Mm. Um, but de gozaru, you don't hear that very often. That is very, very uncommon. Interesting. Um, say, so... He's definitely speaking in something that probably would lend itself more to the sort of King James-ish yeah. type of uh, accent that they give him here. Mm. Um, but, and the way that it's translated here would be something more like, let us go forth. Let oh, us yeah. go forth instead nice. of let's give it a try. Uh, yeah, right? right. If we were to try to use um, more modern or early early modern English or something like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, something like that. Shakespeare's time, King James' time. <clears throat> So, yeah, so he goes out. He's got some samurai Japanese about him for sure. Yeah. He goes out. He says, I am a cyan retainer of the king of Doma. Ready thy axe. And he <laughs> falls upon the captain, kills him. Um, cyan's uh, kind of an interesting character in terms of his, like, um, battle abilities too, right? His, like, yeah. sword skills. Yeah. Um, which are basically just, if you go down... There's like 10 levels and the longer you wait, it sort of fills up and you get to like higher levels. So he has to like wait I know, but longer and then he can like do stronger attacks. There's something very samurai about that, right? Yeah. Like you, you've got the old samurai movies in particular is yeah. probably what this is playing off of, right? And you've got the samurai who they face off and they, they're holding their swords and they just stare each other down. And it, it's, a, it's a showdown yeah. of wits for a while. Until finally someone makes the first move and it's, you know, yeah. um, that I, I, it's not just hack and slash or whatever. Like t generally speaking in uh, the way that the samurai would fight in an American movie about samurai, it's all about lightsabers and flipping your sword around in a Japanese movie about the samurai. It's all about waiting for that one opportunity to unsheath your sword and deliver a death blow, a death blow, like in one go. Mm. Right. So that actually translates really well to the battle system where it's like he's waiting and he's waiting. And the longer he waits, the more the opportunity kind of, you know, ticks up until he can poof, deliver the death blow. That's really yeah. cool. I like it a lot, actually. Yeah, I really like the level two attack, which is essentially just a counter attack. So you select it and then he just waits. And then mm. as soon as he gets hit, then he like strikes back that's and does cool. like a really strong kind of counter attack. Well, and that, that's once again, that's the samurai duel, right? So it's a, it's the reaction thing, right? It's reaction time. It's once one person makes the first move, they both go. Yeah. Ah, that's so cool. It's good stuff. I like him a lot as a, as a, just as a character to come in the party. I just, I like his mechanics. Um, I like, I just like him. I like his design. Me too. He's and I, I like his, um, his personality, yeah. just his honor, 
you know, he's, he's, he's great. Yep. Okay. So, um, he defeats the commander, the soldiers of the empire retreat. They go back inside. We'll wait within the walls while our enemies grow tired without. And, uh, so this is where, um, general Leo is informed that, um, Oh, I, I really liked this interaction between the soldier and Leo. It, it, yep. Again, it, it's sort of oh, our first yeah. introduction to Leo as a character. Yep. So he says, the soldier says to him, General Leo, the Domans appear to be playing a waiting game. And so Leo says, so, they're using their favorite strategy. And the soldier says, General, uh, we're ready to storm the castle as soon as you give the order. He's like, really uh, gung-ho, this guy. Yep. Patience. If we attack now, there will be too many unnecessary casualties. Is very different than what you would expect from a commander or general of the empire at this yeah, point. Yeah. This empire has been painted out as this. Who cares uh, about human lives? Yeah. yeah. Uh, ruthless. And, and particularly with, you know, Kefka. But now yeah. we've seen Celeste, who had a conscience. And now we're seeing Leo, who's very different from, a, you know, just a disposition standpoint than you might expect. Yeah. But general, I'm prepared to lay down my life for the empire at any time. Yep. And then he says, you're from Miranda, are you not? So he, he, he knows his soldiers. I, yeah, I like that right. they do this. Like he, yeah. he knows them by name. He yeah. knows where they're from. He knows their history. He knows his men, which is what a good leader does, right? They, they know who they serve. It's more, I serve, I serve the empire. I serve my soldiers as a leader. It's not, I command. It's like, I, I like that touch. Soldier says, huh? I mean, yes, sir, I am, but why do you ask? He says, you would have me go there and deliver the news of your passing to your family? What would I say when I handed them your sword? How would I look, th- look at them? You're a human being before you're a soldier. Don't be so eager to throw your life away. Emperor Gestal wouldn't want you to die for nothing. Right. I thought that was an interesting line, too. So he obviously sees the emperor differently than right. any of the returners we've talked to so far or anything like right. that. So. Now, we're going to meet the Emperor eventually, and Leo's misguided about him, but I, I thought that that was interesting, that, that Leo sees the Emperor differently, obviously. Yeah. He sees him as being a, a bit more um, of a man who has like real honor and cares about his soldiers and about his people. Uh, so then somebody comes in and says, a carrier pigeon arrived from the Emperor. And uh, the emperor summons me. I must return at once. So he sees the letter and he has to leave. Yeah, yeah. So this actually in part does make me think maybe the emperor knew about this because the emperor calls him away. Yeah. Why would he do that otherwise? Why otherwise would he call him yeah, away? Yeah, that makes sense. Because he knows Leo won't go through with a plan like that. Yeah. But yeah. Kefka would do it. So now I'm starting to think, I, I think the emperor was in on this the whole time. Yeah. Uh, well, he says as he's leaving, he's like, hey, I'll leave you in charge. Uh, don't jump the gun, please. Yes, to, to Kefka. <laughs> he, he knows right. that these guys are itching to see some action. but Yeah. So um, I think it's the Sabin who says this next line, right? Oh, so that's General Leo. He could be my friend if he weren't my enemy. Yeah. That's what the SNES yeah, says. Right. So, so even, yeah, even Sabin and the party members are, are surprised at him once. Yep. Um, Kafka wants to poison everything, so. Yep. Uh, let's see. There was, here's the conversation between Kefka and Leo. Once Leo's gone, I can turn this water into a flowing river of poison. Anyone who touches it will be pushing up daisies. Hee hee hee. And Leo says, I'm afraid the emperor has called me back home. Try not to cause any trouble in my absence. Kefka says, I'll take care of things faster than you ever would. And Leo says, nothing dirty, Kefka. There may, they may be our enemies, but they're still human beings. Try not to forget that. And he says, we needn't show mercy to those who side with the returners, which is good because I never seem to have any of the stuff. I, I thought it was interesting, uh, again, kind of a weird line in the Super Nintendo version. I think he just calls him a loser to his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kefka no, says yeah. to Leo, like, you loser, like, blah, blah, blah. He says that right there. Yeah, you loser. I'll take care of this situation in no time. <laughs> okay. You just go be a good little boy, says yeah. Kefka. It, it's too on the nose yeah. for Leo. Um like, not that this is necessarily subtle in this version, but at least yeah. it's not so obvious he's going to do exactly the thing you're telling him not to do the second yes. you walk out of camp, yeah, which yeah. would t- make Leo, give Leo pause to leave. I think that leave. he would wait a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So at least in this version, he's saying, I'll take th- care of things faster than you ever would. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to poison or do anything dirty. 
Because then he says nothing dirty, right? They're, they may bear anything but they're human beings. And he says, we didn't show mercy to those who side with the returners. Right. Right? But he doesn't... It, it's said in a way to where it's like they just disagree about how they view their enemies. But in that version, it, it comes across like, the, the, the moment you leave, I'm just going to go poison them, like right now. And then Leo leaves anyway. And then Leo so, leaves. Again, I, I really like the advanced version of the script quite a lot more for, yeah. for reasons like this. Um, so then at this point, uh, Sabin shows up to confront Kefka. Yep. And this is where we, we were saying before, Kefka just like runs away and runs away. Yowch! Wait, <laughs> wait, he says. Do I look like a waiter? Do I look like a waiter? Good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you get into, I think, two or three battles with him there yeah. as you're chasing him through the camp. And uh, he get, he gets past some sentries who he sends after you fight them. And while you're fighting them or while you're busy with them, this is when... Uh, he goes and pours the poison into the, the river, water, yeah. and you kind of see it, you know. Uh, it turns the, purplish yeah, or the, something like that, yeah. The, the river turns purple. And so then we cut back into the castle, yeah. and you see uh, the, the dome and sentry saying, there's a great deal of activity in the Imperial camp. I think they're preparing another assault. And he and Cyan notices the color of the water. He's like, does the water not look a bit odd? He's like, oh, sir, Cyan, it must be poison. Uh, and, and they're like, start oh my gosh, we falling. must run to the, warn the king. Yeah, people are like dropping left and right. Yeah. And so they run into the king, to the king with all haste. They get inside uh, and you know, the king is, you know, sprawled out on the floor as well. Um, Your highness, the king says, who's there? So he's like losing his, his eyesight. Cyan, your excellency. Oh, Cyan, my sight is failing. I cannot see your face. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's dead. Excellency, please, you must be strong. Cyan, you have defended this realm since the days of my father before me. So I liked that Dutch. He's right. like a retainer from the, the, the former king as well. Mm. I thank you for your service. Uh, forgive me, I failed to protect the kingdom. No, Excellency, the fault lies with me, not thee. I like that. Uh, and so he tells him to go find his family. And I thought that was interesting too. He didn't run to his family first. He ran to the king first. He ran to the king first, yeah, yeah that's right. His, his duty uh, you know, He's, came first. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. That makes sense. So, um, but then he, then he runs in to where his family is at. And, uh, he, so he has a son, Oh Wayne and, and his, his wife, wife Elaine. Elaine. Yeah. And Elaine is, uh, I, I don't even think he can say any final words to them. They're both just dead. I think they're on both arrival. just dead. Like yep. as soon as he gets in the room, like he can't even, he doesn't even get to say goodbye or anything. They're just dead. Um, and so Elaine, do not leave me, Elaine. And then this is unpardonable. And then Owain just sort of like tumbles out of the bed, just falls on the floor, limp. Like, no, this is not possible. I will not forgive them. The Empire must pay for this. And he runs out in a rage. This is another area where I really don't like the Super Nintendo version of the script. Yeah. Because this is a really like heavy scene. Like one of the few moments that are like truly really heavy mm -hmm. uh in the game there yeah. you know there's no kind of like funny joke or anything you know kind of silly happening around this is meant to be one of those heavy moments and i think the word he uses when he sees a wayne fall out is no impossible this is he says idiotic or something like that oh in which is a SNES? really yeah it's a really weird word to use in that situation He's like, idiotic, no, you're right. Yeah, idiotic. He says idiotic. What? It's what? Like that, I don't it, remember reading it's, that. It's like a really weird choice of words for In the you, Japanese, you just he seeing, just says it's impossible. Yeah, and which is he what it says say here. Idiotic. He says, this is not possible. Oh, I will not what? forgive them. The Empire must pay for this. Idiotic. It, that, this is what I was talking Why about. Why ruin the scene by putting that word? Okay, so I'm not the only one who feels this way. I, it's really dumb to well, use the word the idiotic. Thing, right? I played the SNES, and I don't remember that word. Seeing that word. So it could be that it's like, yeah, the word shouldn't have been there, but the scene still has weight yeah and people will possibly like me not remember <laughs> that it said that word but still it shouldn't be it shouldn't be there uh yeah it's it's really really not a strong choice of word for the scene where you, i mean that's, and for his character yeah he doesn't talk like that no. he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> use words like that no he would say like uh well, you know the the fool or something like that he wouldn't say idiotic yeah i mean i i like where he says here this is unpardonable Right, this is unforgivable. This is not possible. Um, those are the things he's feeling, and he's in an, an absolute rage. But like, yeah, idiotic is just not the word I would choose there. Yeah. And and it's it's just things like that 
to use that word in that moment, that's sort of like, the scene doesn't hit it the way it, it. Yeah, could, yeah. right? Yeah. And this is part of the reason why my first playthrough of Final Fantasy VI, I was like, this just, something feels off about some of these scenes. And it, mm. I think it's, I think it's the Woolsey translation, not, yeah. not, I mean, like you said, in Japanese. I'm it's seeing just, the Japanese. In fact, Woolsey added a lot more words than are actually there. Like this scene here where, um, Kayan says, oh, Wayne, not you too, son, you can't both leave me. Mm. In the Japanese, that whole text box just says Shun. Well, his name is Shun, is his son's name, not Owain. Oh. But he just says his son's name. That's it. That's, yeah. all, that's the whole box. Shun, dot, 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 dot. And the next one is yeah. ah, ah, ah. Like he's not, he can't even talk, right? He yeah. can't even speak here. Right. Um, and oh, by the way, also, Elaine's name is Mina. 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 Yeah. So Mina this, and Shun. In this version, he just says his son's name too. Owain. Oh, no, no, like, mm. so anyway, just another example, nothing to really harp on too long, but another example where this, this is just a, a far superior translation in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. And um, yeah, that scene was really heavy though. Um, and it's really kind of shocking too, that yeah. it's like, oh, he's going to be able to save someone. Like, no, he can't. And this is going to affect, this is our character intro to Cayenne, right? And this yeah. is how, this is colors how he's going to act throughout the rest of the game now. So he runs out in a rage and he's just fighting a bunch I of guys on his own. Warrior of kingdom, <laughs> the kingdom of Doma. Yeah. Yep. And just like the killing Tainer people. Of the king of Doma, just like He's such fighting. a beast. Yep. <laughs> he's such a beast. And Sabin and Shadow sort of, you know, come across him at this point. They join with him to fight, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they're helping him out. They fight a bunch of guys. Uh, he says, uh, science says, Grr, art thou an enemy as well? He's like, ouch, oh. probably shouldn't have gotten in the middle of that. Once uh, again. Let me give you a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Once what again, you get the Degozaru, the, uh, the very the um, older form I don't even want to say formal. It's just samurai Japanese. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like in a way it is, but you know. I know not thy name nor allegiance, but I welcome thy aid. They you fight go. together. Uh, I have no mercy. There will be no mercy for thee. Um, so they fight all those guys. Um, he, he thanks them at the end of the battle. Sabin says, no need for thanks. I'm Sabin from the kingdom of Figaro. We should get out of here. Uh, but Sion's like, oh, I have to avenge my family and my countrymen. And Sabin's like, if we stick around any longer, we'll have an entire regiment down our throats. Uh, there they are that way. Well, is this where they jump into the machines? Yeah, they jump it's into so the, funny. the Magitek armor. It's so funny. I love it when, yeah. when Cayenne first jumps into the Magitek and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like running into things. Like, yeah, he has no idea how to control like, it. He's like, what even is this? Yeah, he says, um, and I like this version of it too. Yeah. Sir Sabin, what manner of armored beasts might these be? <laughs> <laughs> Sir Sabin, how does one manipulate these abominations? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I love it. Uh, and he's like, oh, four. And, and, and Sabin starts speaking in that older form, too. Oh, yeah. That's Thou right. art getting to be quite a pain. Oh, great. Now I'm starting to talk like you. <laughs> Listen, just see that lever? Like, just pull that one <laughs> or push that down. So, like, he, so you know, they, they all jump into one and they're, you, you break out of the camp uh, fighting with the Magitek armors. They get outside of it. And then, you know, uh, let's see here. They, okay, so Sabin says, I think we should be safe now, so how do we get to Narf from here? Sion says, I believe the only route passes through the forest to the south, but. And mm -hmm. Sabin says, all right, if we're going into the woods, I guess we won't be needing these hunks of scrap metal anymore, and they get out of them. Yeah. Um, so they're going to go through the Phantom Forest. Ooh, and the forest looks sweet, by the way. It looks yeah. super cool. Oh, these, are, these are some of the best backgrounds in the whole game. Yeah. In, in the forest. They look nice, and and it, you kind of get a little bit of a side scroll kind of like yeah. the whole movement system kind of changes. Yeah. And old games used to do this a lot. In, in you know modern games, everything just looks so real. It's like, well, this is just how it is. Third person camera and just like go. Yeah. Um, but in the older games, you had a lot more. Actually, you know, a game that does this really well, uh, varying the gameplay, is near and near automata, mm. um, where they'll give you the different kind of. Sometimes it's side scrolling. Sometimes it's like a bullet hell thing. Sometimes yep. it's three D. Yep. Or not three D, but third person. Um. Uh, this, these old games did that a lot. Like most of these games would do that. They would kind of change things up a little and give you something else that I, I feel like is super interesting. And then that helps them to play with the art a little bit too. They can kind of make things look a little bit different. Right. And so as we're traveling through this forest, um, it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. So they have to pass through this haunted forest basically to get yeah. to the other side, which will put them back on the road to Narsh. 
But in this forest, there is a train, which is a called Phantom the Phantom Train. train. And uh, this is essentially like, I mean, what would the... Uh, like the river sticks and, and death on the ra or on the on the on the boat, oh, right? The, that the takes ferry. you the yeah, ferry. The ferry yeah. that takes you to uh takes you to the afterlife. Right. Um so that's kind of what this what this phantom train does. It takes lost souls yeah. uh, or newly departed souls to they call the it other the, side. to the other side exactly yeah. yeah so there's a ferry over the river Styx and this is so good because um so the phantom train is the ferry, right? And then you have the impresario and the Phantom Train or the Impresario, I guess you could say, are the psychopomp, and that's where that word comes from, one who goes back and forth between the two sides. Yeah. Uh, but he even says, oh, this train ferries people to the other side. They, right. And I, I don't know if that's – that's probably just Woolsey, Woolsey using the Western yeah, Woolsey. Dia dialogical like, tools <laughs> to make it so that we understand what's happening here. But using the word ferry there as a verb to say what – to describe what's happening, even yeah. though it's a train, right. um, is, is really cool. Yeah. So this is death moving between worlds. Um, but, and then uh, as soon as you get on it too, it's, it's really funny. There's this is a funny little cutscene that happens where it's like, wait, what is this? What's happening here? Like, <laughs> oh, this is the train that takes people to the other side. Oh, we got to get off. But it's like already moving. <laughs> it's already and moving. And for some reason they can't just jump they off. can't you know? jump off. That's fine. That's fine. I don't mind. Um, They're stuck. So you go one train back and you'll find a ghost that like – joins your team yep. basically he fights like, with you <laughs> it's so funny i love it but as soon as that ghost um dies or uh you you can use the ghost to possess people or something like that um you have to go back and get another yep. ghost right so it's kind of a thing you have to kind of like be super picky about when you're gonna uh decide to use the ghost mm. uh, but then you do meet who is the empresario who is the conductor basically of yeah. the train and talking to him it's like hey how do we make the train stop? And the doors are all locked. Everything's <laughs> shut. And I'm expecting something like, you cannot stop this train. <laughs> it is the souls of those who have departed. Right. You cannot escape death. But instead he's like, oh, just use those controls <laughs> over there. Just pull the lever and it'll stop. You can get off. <laughs> So, it's so funny. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I haven't played this game in a long time, by the way, people. It's so funny. And you get the feeling, though, that like that you cannot leave. But yeah. at least to let the player know what to do, what is the objective of this mm -hmm. train portion of the game, they kind of got to tell you something like that. And so yeah. it ends up being just like, oh, just find the controls and push the stop button. Yep. Yeah, and it. I liked that Cyan had said earlier, like a train. I thought all of Doma's railways had been destroyed in the fighting. Mm. So, like, the, that, that, that's what the, well, the first thing the Empire would do when conquering is, like, any supplies that's coming right. into the kingdom, they'd destroy them by they destroying would. the railways, right? Well, to go back to the uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls <laughs> analogy <laughs> uh, earlier on, or Pan's Labyrinth or whatever else, the Spanish rebels... Uh, one of the things that a lot of the rebellion peoples do in psh, every country, I suppose, is they would, you bomb trains and mm -hmm. train uh, railways, yep. right? And so I could see the returners also doing something like that, right? Where it's like the the Gastonian Empire blows up trains to, you know, keep resources from going to who they take over. But then the returners are blowing up the Gastonian Empire's train, <laughs> train lines as well. Yeah. You know, they're just kind of going back and forth. So I would assume at some point all the rail lines are just destroyed, yeah. right? Yep which is what he was alluding to yeah. that happened in Doma. Yep. Um, they get on the thing. <clears throat> Sabin's like, what'd you say this train was again? Signs like this is the phantom train. It carries the souls of the departed to their final destination. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. You're saying this train's a one-way ride to the afterlife? Signs says, unless we find a way off, I'm afraid this is exactly where we'll end up. Sabin's like, well, I'm afraid that this trip, uh, that's a trip I'm going to have to pass on. If it won't <laughs> let us up or let us off, then we'll have to stop it ourselves. Let's make for the engine. And then, you know, all the stuff you were talking about. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I like this section a lot too. Um, or this dungeon, the, I guess you would call it, but it's like a dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the ghost, the no escape. Yeah. Thing. No escape. No, no escape. escape. <laughs> They're just like coming after you. And there's I, like dozens of them, you know. I like uh, in the one car, the dining car, where oh they bring gosh, food so to your good. table. <laughs> okay, so who was your character when you, you can first... switch them out? I know, but who did oh, you do it first? I was probably Sabin yeah, as me the too, leader me in the too. party first. It is yeah. the funniest one. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe how good it is. Um, first off, I, I think this is this is kind of crazy, right? 
So as we're going from train to train, we're kind of like disconnecting the, the, the cars yeah. behind us to it's make so sure like that they can't follow Those souls, like, I know. what happens to I'm them? I'm thinking but... this, like, okay, this is great. But at the same time, we're dismantling the organization of the entire world, right? If the souls of the dead don't go to the other side, that means they just stay on this side, <laughs> right? You can't do that. They're like breaking everything, right? Yeah. Uh, but at the diner, it's so funny because Sabin shows up. He sits down at the table and he's just like pounding the table. <laughs> yeah. Food, food, food. I love that. Food, bring food, me everything, bring me you, everything got. you got. <laughs> Everything. And then I th- is it Cayenne or who is it? I think it's Cayenne. Somebody shows up and it's like, dude, don't just like eat the food yes. from the ghosts. He like, says, is this train's food t- t- truly safe to eat? It's like, and he's like, what are you worried about? Yeah. Can't wage war on an empty stomach. Can't wage war on an empty stomach. Okay. So this is so funny because uh, th- it's not time for this, right? No. <laughs> but I love it, right? It's silly and yeah. nonsensical, but how could you go to the diner car of a train and not sample the menu? Right? <laughs> how, how is this possible? And yeah. I, as I, I and it, it, it just happened to be um, Sabin who I was controlling when, yeah. when I first showed up here, but um, he's kind of becoming my favorite character this playthrough yeah. of the game yeah, he's where fun. it's like the raft scene and now <laughs> this, right? This guy is straight out of the nineties. Yep. I absolutely love it. Yep. It's so funny. So, Part of the reason, um, and I was also, I, I, you know, I was fully expecting him to have some negative side effects from eating all this ghost yep. food. And I love it. the ghost just shows up and he's like your waiter and it's <laughs> like, it's a full on thing. There's a kitchen yeah. running and yep. like, I love it. It's so <laughs> funny. But part of the reason I don't mind the silliness is that you, you, it's kind of built into the structure of the game to begin with. Like for example, um, well, okay, I'll just read what I've got here. Um, in Camus, right, who wrote plays and stuff. You have things like absurdism. Now, there's two definitions there, but I'll get into that later. Um, So Camus' philosophy will feature later on in the game, um, but he also used to write plays. And if you watch a play with a scene, if you're watching a play and a scene like this occurs, like it's a dramatic play, but then there's a scene where somebody's like begging for food, right? And it's like, doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's just different when it's in a play. I know. If it's in a movie, it's like, what is this? Doesn't make sense. The but if it's in a different. play and you're socially, you're with other people, and he's making these jokes, and it's obviously supposed to be funny, it it works for whatever reason. It yeah. works in a play. It just doesn't work in a movie. Yeah. Um. But you you laugh at the absurdity, right? It's just like, oh, what's going on? Okay, back to the story, and that works in a play. Um, it's similar to as if the entire cast just broke into song in a musical, yeah, right. right? And it's like, this is absurd. This doesn't make sense. This isn't, this isn't right. But, you know, you suspend your disbelief and you, you're just along for the ride. Yeah. Like, it's the crafting of the story around you and you're just along for the ride. And you it's really fun. It in the form in which it's presented. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of complaining that it remo- ruins the dramatic feel of the story, um, just before this, in fact, on one of the trains, right before this, um, right next to uh, some enemies, I pulled out a tent and like, just like just slept slept in a tent. <laughs> I just spent the night on the train in a little tent, this little tiny tent, uh, next to all these enemies, right? And it's just part of the, how the game yeah. works, right? This is how the game works. It's silly. There's parts of the games that are just due to the game's structure and just the nature of this type of an RPG, where these absurd elements are just there. They're just present, and you you just you you take advantage of them you accept it as it is you don't try to take it too seriously yeah. because if you do then so much just doesn't make sense right. and then the game the, the game developers know that and they put stuff like this into the game um, knowing that the game already kind of presents itself this way. They yeah. don't need to take it too seriously because at any point you can pull out a tent and camp right in front of an enemy and they just chill while you sleep for eight hours. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, D- it's not, really good. Not to necessarily repeat myself here too much, but it, it really does, I feel so strongly, have to do with the, the, the layers of abstraction that existed yeah. in old games like this. Yes. The reason why it fits, it doesn't seem wrong, it doesn't seem out of place, as absurd as it is, because the whole game is full of absurdities in the form of abstractions. Exactly. That are just and they can't be avoided. Getting a point across. Right. Exactly. It's not it's not meant to be presented realistically. So yeah. that's why it works. So in this instance, I'm just like, man, Sabin, you are a beast, man. I absolutely <laughs> love it. And you, you, I switched out all my characters and had them all eat because it heals your health, right? Yep. It gives you immunity to poison and stuff like that. So it's really good. Um but I do have to put a little caveat here. There are two ways to read the word absurdism. One of them is closer to the nihilistic view about the meaninglessness of life, uh-huh. which is specifically in Camus' writings. And that's something that we're going to get into a little bit later. 
Um, but there's also the sense of the meaninglessness of a particular scene in a movie or a game or a play, and that's only there to lighten the experience for the audience, but also can serve the purpose of informing you as to the characters and who the characters are a little bit. Yeah. I think it still fits, uh, but it usually works more um, in an experience like a play and often will fall flat in something like a movie. So, the, But the absurdist philosophy, it's going to feature more later on in the game. So I just kind of want to... Like, put it out there right now, there's a lot of absurdist elements in both meanings of the words of absurdism in that the whole everything is meaningless and also that, like, every now and then there's scenes that are just absurd. And you just, it's all part of the game. It's all packaged up. It's really good. So we're going to be getting into so, that more um, I just got to mention here, we just got yeah. another great merchandise idea from Pax oh. and Christo. What is make, it? Well, he just put make FF abstract again. But make FF if, abs, a, M-F-A-A. On a make, red hat. <laughs> make FF <laughs> abstract again. Or we could put Final Fantasy. But point being, we yeah. were talking about wisest man built his house upon the sand. That's right. Yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could make like a red hat with make Final Fantasy abstract again. That would be awesome. It would work. <laughs> <laughs> People would buy it. So um, also, um, switching your party members and they all kind of just get to eat at that table. And what, I think one of the reasons why I love this game so much is because a lot of these things remind me of Super Mario RPG. Yes. Which, for those who don't know, is basically the best game ever made. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you should play it. Um, a lot of these things that I'm seeing here, a lot of the funny moments, a lot of the really charming aspects of this game are, are just across the board uh, how games just were made in this, in this time period. Mm -hmm. But particularly, a lot of this translates into similar things that happened in Mario RPG as well. So I do have a personal sense of nostalgia here. Um, not just for FF6, because I love that game, but also for the other games around it that were happening yep. during it. Yep. They were all kind of like this. Yep. And and it's it's beautiful, and it's really fun if you get into it. If you just suspend your disbelief <laughs> a little bit, you know, it's like you can have the time of your life playing games yeah. like this. Um, so we got Siegfried yeah, here. Yeah, that's my next note. Too. Yeah, Siegfried. <laughs> He's so funny. Again, this is... I, I love this, I, this part is, of the game. It's almost it's like so they good. took Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy V, the joke uh, boss, sub-boss character mm -hmm. you fight over and over. And they made like three characters out of that idea in this. Yeah, we got Oct Kefka, or Ultros. Kefka, Ultros, and Siegfried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy, he comes up and he looks really hardcore. You he know, does. he looks like he's really strong. Like, which is, I am the greatest fighter in the world, you know, <laughs> and it's just the buff ripped dude. Yeah, which is kind of like more similar to Gilgamesh, who also mm. looks very like imposing, imposing as a warrior. He goes around and collects weapons and swords from yeah, his yeah. fallen enemies, kind of a thing, right? General um, Grievous. Good General Grievous like. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Sabin says to him, greatest, uh, oh, he says, um, I am Siegfried, the greatest swordsman in all the world, and that treasure belongs to me because there's a treasure chest in the room. If I were you, yeah. you over-muscled moose, I'd grab Grandpa there and run away while you still can. <laughs> and Sabin says, greatest windbag is more like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who has to beat, it bra uh, beat a brave retreat. And Siegfried says, what? Brazen words for a man about to be uh, spitted upon my blade like a plump and juicy pig. <laughs> on guard and so you fight him and he's really easy <laughs> he's unbelievable he does like four damage or five damage yeah, to I each love of how, you um, and then you just like wreck him so he fast. does an attack where he gets like 10 hits in it's like bam oh, bam, yeah. bam 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 but it's like two damage yeah three it's damage, like nothing yeah. one damage five damage it's, it's like so it's like so weak <laughs> oh man here i come you kids better get ready hiya and then he's gasping and wheezing and huffing <laughs> had enough yet <laughs> uh, and he's like no it cannot be but the last laugh belongs to me and he goes and grabs the treasure he steals the treasure away. Away. The treasure's mine <laughs> so, uh, it's funny yeah. it's yeah, what, a, what a bag of wind and then um yeah, so you're kind of following him. You got to fight some other enemies, but you can see him still running from train to train. So yep. you can like catch up to him, chasing him. Yeah, it's so good. Um, and then you basically come to the front of the front of the train the front here. Of the train, yeah, you stop shut it, shut it down. But then the train is like, "Ooh, I knew someone was slowing me down. Mm -hmm. I guess it was you." And you're, I, I love that. Okay, I get it. Abstract. I'm still going to make fun of it, right? <laughs> you're outside of the train, <laughs> <laughs> running. You know, like away from the train. Oh, in like, the battle, in the yes, battle itself. in the battle. And it's yeah. the train, and you're yeah, fighting the it's train chasing itself. chasing you. And it's hilarious, because it's like, dude, just step aside, and the train goes, and you can go <laughs> wherever you want to go. But I don't, I just love that. I, I really enjoy the, yeah. the, the experience of these games yeah. that they offer. Um, so yeah, the train is like really upset. You fight it a lot. 
I heard um, a, a while ago that there's this there's a, a thing that can happen. Um, I didn't do it. I don't know if you did either, but it's possible to um, have Saban do a, deliver a body slam the suplex. on the train. Suplex. Yeah, suplex, His suplex. Where he picks up the, tra- the yeah, whole We got a train. gif of it right here. Oh, is this it? Yeah, somebody's showing it right here. Yeah. This is, at this point, this is so famous. Yeah. Uh, 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 kind of like a funny, memeable sort of moment in the game that, like, you, you're. You're obligated to do it. Like, if you're playing this boss and you don't suplex a train, like, what are you doing? You're not not playing Final Fantasy VI (laughs) if you don't do it. It's something that I'd remembered before and totally forgot was even a thing. I'm just here for the story, you know? Yeah. Yeah, So what's funny about this is in the very next section that follows this, um, when Saban and uh, Cyan Mm -hmm. jump off the falls and you're falling, you're fighting like yes, those fish enemies while you're right. falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that battle, you cannot suplex those enemies. Right. Like, there are certain enemies you, you're yeah, not, you shouldn't. It, they're and like the train, immune to the, the move. The train should have been one of That's those. That's what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah. is, is I think it was a mistake. It's yeah, like one yeah. of those things they just forgot right. to make the train the, unsuplexable. The if-then <laughs> statements, they, they forgot to add it to the class. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then it became such a, a meme, right? That everyone loved <laughs> yeah. it so much that they just left it in every other version <laughs> after that. They can't take it well, out now. Because it's not the longest fight and it's not the no, hardest no. boss. And so it's like it's not a big deal. That that it's that you can do something like that and so uh, easily, you know, <laughs> will win the fight. I know. I mean, it's just like the strength of Sabin to lift <laughs> a train yeah. over his head, jump fifty feet in the air, to turn it upside <laughs> down and suplex it. And what's funny, like you're on the train, like we were there. We know if if he could do it this whole time, <laughs> he could have done it from the begin from the get go. Right. Anyways, it's so funny. I absolutely love it. Um, so then the train says something like, okay, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. But, you know, you have to do something for me. And I don't know exactly yeah. what that thing is. He it's says, first I, so he says uh, but first there's something I must do, That's which it. is That's he it. has to go pick up some. To stop and get more people. Some more yeah. people. So the train yeah. stops and our characters get off. And yeah. then a, n- a whole slew of new dead people show up on the train. And among them is Elaine and Owain. Yes. And um, Kyan is having a really hard time time yeah. with that but he doesn't get back on the train no like he knows that there's nothing he can do right but seeing them that's rough that would just be really hard and, and like, so he i love goes up how to the door. yeah, yeah he, so he just runs after it on the side of it as yeah, it's pulling to out the end. and he's just running next to them being like no no yep. you know. and what you see at the very end too of the whole platform is is a clock right yeah and th- this is really good because like, yeah, it's a train station. It has a clock on it, right? People need to, the time. The train leaves at 610. You're going to have clocks at train stations, right? Yeah. But this is a train station for dead people. <laughs> and <laughs> as it relates to this, like time and everyone's time comes, like death and time are often really closely associated. And, you know, as the clock keeps moving, this is just another reminder. Like your family is dead and they're gone. And all we see is you mourning their death and then a clock that is presumably, it's an abstraction, right? Presumably this clock is still moving. Yeah. And that idea is like, like you, you've got to, you've got to move, move on, on. Yeah. right? Everyone's time comes, but time doesn't stop. Yeah. And I, I really liked, I thought it was a really nice touch, but as the train goes, then you, he kind of hears some voices, I guess, mm. that say like, you know, don't forget me and away yeah. and saying like, I'll protect, I'll protect mom. Yeah. So Elaine says, my love, you made me so happy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was good. And Owain says, dad, I'll make sure mom's all right. It's really good. And what's yeah. funny is that we didn't know these characters, yeah. right? And something, what if, what if, what if these were their last words while they were alive at Doma Castle? Mm. It, I don't think it would have been as powerful. Sure. It's better here. It's better Way here. Way better here. Because yeah. we got to know Cayenne's character better. Yeah. And we got to travel with him a little ways. And now we get to have those last words, you know, happen at this moment, which yeah. is I think like probably 10 times more powerful yeah. than it would have been these unknown characters. Oh no, I'm dying. Like, yeah. but not knowing exactly who anyone is or why this matters. Death scenes in general, uh, almost always feature the person having their final words to somebody yes. in a tearful sort of like, Oh, like, don't forget me. Like, don't, right. don't revenge is not the way. Yes, like, yes, you know, yes. that sort of thing. Right. It's, it's so not tropey. what she would have wanted. And right. it, 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 I feel like the scene in Doma Castle was so much stronger because he arrived and they were just, it's dead. just gone. They, they're gone already. He doesn't like get it. to say goodbye. Like yeah. it's, it's like they, they've, they're just dead. And yeah. it's it's way more shocking and way harder hitting that way. It is. Yeah. And so I agree with you. 
giving him the chance to, after he's already seen them dead and gone, to then, oh, they're there, they're right there, right. they're going away from me, and then they say, it, it's way stronger to have that moment happen. So much. Here. And then and then the camera, I mean, it just lingers on Cayenne. It's just there. Yeah. And it's it's just so much more powerful. And yeah. it's like, man, what's he thinking? What's he feeling? And, uh, you know, Sabin kind of tries to walk up and offer some advice, or you're kind of controlling him. And yeah. ultimately, I think, well, I had... Shadow. Shadow. He says, best time. leave him be. He's like, yeah, yeah, just leave him alone. Like yeah. he's, you know, he's, he'll work through it and then, and then we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Um, if you don't have Shadow, I actually don't know. Yeah. Exactly I, what he could have run here. away at this point, so he just wouldn't have been there. Mm. So, uh, but the way it played out for me was really nice. I liked it a lot. Yep. So you go up to the Barren Falls after that. <laughs> it looks super cool. It's by the awesome. Way. Huge. Yeah. Like Niagara Falls. Like Niagara time, Falls. Times, yeah. Like you know, larger five. than that. Yeah. Yeah. It was just the whole screen is just taken up with and this I just got to say waterfall. how much I loved the use of um, parallax layers or the, the, the fake creation of parallax using uh, two layers yeah, yeah. that they would do in these Super and Nintendo like games to make something down. look like it was farther away. Yeah. So they do almost like this crane where like. It's the camera, not really, but like kind of pulls up as they jump and you just see like the, the chasm they're falling into of the, the water tumbling down. Yeah. So it's like the camera's lower and it like comes up as he jumps. Exactly. And it's just like, it whoa, goes up and it's like, those falls are huge, right? Yes. The way and they that pull That water off, is probably very foamy and not easy to swim in. No. And don't do this, people. <laughs> this is not a good idea. But the way that they sell scale uh, yeah, with, really with well. the use of layers really like well. this is, is really impressive. Um, but this is where Shadow basically says, like, mm. this is where, if he hadn't left already, this is where he leaves mandatorily. He's like, okay, I'm done. I'm leaving. And Savin's like, thanks for your help. Yeah. Let's team up again sometime. Yep, Shadow heads out. By the way, on the on the topic of Shadow, I have a couple of these comments that I want to read. Our patrons are offering some killer advice. Okay. Everyone is, by the way, all of you, but I'm going to uh, uh, pick out a couple of people. Can you um, scroll up just a little bit? Yes, um, so there were two. So it wasn't just his wife and kid. It was also his, oh, whole, the king. His, his whole town and his king. Yeah. And as the, you mentioned, the people from Doma, he, he had gone to see the king before he had, you know, right. that. and you know, something important about uh, monarchies, they aren't so common anymore <laughs> um, in the world. Yeah. Um, but the word king and the word kin are basically the same word. Mm. So the idea of a, of a, uh, what would you call it? a royal family is that, is that um, they are the royal family of the kingdom and that everyone in the kingdom is like... Family to Family. Them. They're all like close-ishly like related. The mother right? and father of the whole... So they're the yeah. presiding patriarchs over the whole thing and, and patriarch and matriarch, you would say. Um, and then you've got everyone else who is like something like just this massive extended family. Um, and so, you know, saying that, oh, why did he go to the king? Like, I don't feel any connection to the president, you know? It's like, yeah. I'd go to my family. But it's like, if you understand the way kingdoms work more or less it's like that is still it's the greater family he's the head of the extended family of the whole you know region sure right and so it's still pretty powerful there um and then of course all the townspeople but then there was the next comment one right below it uh, he says um and this is from ritaru. ritaru and the other one was from um that was from from the collector, the collector who's yeah. a beast and ritaru's a beast and all of your beasts um ritaru says it's interesting that the assassin is the guy who offers advice on how to handle grief mm. The shadow um, says it. Yeah. yeah, the shadow's the one who says that. And I feel like that's something important to bring up. Um, we'll talk more about him later, though. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so they jump off. They fight some monsters going down. I think we're going to kind of wrap up here as soon as we get yeah. through. There's, there's not much to talk about with the Velt, and, but I want to talk a little bit about Ga and recruiting Ga. Oh, Ga. Yeah, did yeah. you did you, re you recruited him here, right? Like, I did. Well, I guess you yeah, have to because he has to show you the well where the... The, oh, the, the mask is so you the can, thing. You yes. can survive the trench. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, but there's some fun. There's some really fun stuff there. Yeah. So the Velt. Um, this is an area of the world uh, where all the monster groups that you have previously fought, you can encounter them again here. And so Ga is like the blue mage class of this game. Oh, right. Where he learns monster abilities. Yes. Yeah. He kind of goes underground and yeah. Yeah. So like. When you come across a group of enemies, you can have Ga go with them. So it's like he goes and travels with that little group of monsters for a while. And yeah. he'll come back having learned That's awesome, yeah. their abilities, right? This game, uh, like you can, oh, it's a, just a JRPG. Like it is so <laughs> unique. It is so yeah. interesting. And like, it's so cool the way that they gave this whole ca ensemble cast of characters their own unique way to participate in the, uh, what otherwise is, you know, a 
can become a very stale True. type of battle system, True. right? But the way that they were able to vary it and make it so unique within each character, I, I think it's so yeah. cool. I think when you're not going to do a class changing system like Final Fantasy V did, oh, right, yeah. where you have all this customization and choice, and you want to, you want the characters to be funneled more into um, something that lends itself better to. I'm going to write a scenario for that character, and so that character would make more sense yeah. that they fit this. Yes, exactly. Class. Yeah. Right. And having Gao be a wild man who like yeah. rolls, <laughs> runs with the beasts, like that is so. <laughs> that's such, a, and that's exactly like yeah. that makes sense as to how he would then acquire these skills. Like right. it's so good. So like it's a, it's a nice way if you're not going to go the route of class changing to make each character have a really unique way of fighting, a really yeah. unique way of gaining new abilities that makes them stand out, that can make a player be more attached to this one maybe than this one and want to sure. use them more. That, that's yeah. their way of role playing. That's, that becomes the, the way of role playing in a, a battle system more locked or sort of like linear in character, yeah. um, character uh customization yeah where you can't i can't make gaw into a black mage or a warrior but like i can choose which guy i bring with me based on right. which abilities i like and so your party is what you're customizing more than like the character necessarily yeah so i kind of like how they I do that it. i feel like this is one of the better examples in rpgs of where we're not going to go like that classical D D route where we let the, the player pick every attribute of the character yeah, and yeah. like really customize, customize them customize it. Yeah. Cause we're telling a story and I need a character who's a wild boy that lives in the belt <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my story. So I've got anyways, 13 um, year old, by the way, it's, it's a good way of doing it uh, that I think really yeah. works for kind of this style of RPG. But, By the way, as uh, Sabin, after he jumps off the edge and it's like, okay, we're going to swim, right? <laughs> it's, it's his like lifeless floating animation again. <laughs> his, his the pixel, what do you call it? The character? Um, yeah, he's like- un His sprite? His sprite is unconscious. Yeah. He's just like, ah, he's just like floating down the river and washes ashore. And it's like, I love Sabin so yeah, much. He is great. so, he's such a good character. I absolutely love him. Um, so yeah, so you'll, you'll encounter Ga kind of randomly as you're walking around on the yeah. belt trying to figure out where to go. And um, you, you, he talks about being hungry. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. So you have to go to the town and, and buy some meat, meat, yeah, and then take it out and throw <clears throat> it at him in the fight. <laughs> and then like he'll, he'll, he'll actually start following you and come to the party, right? But they have a kind of yeah. a funny exchange here. Him and Sabin. Uh, him and Sabin so are funny, dude. back and forth, and Cyan's <laughs> trying to like mediate yeah. between them. And he, 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 think, he thinks it's really funny that he's using words like thou. Cyan, because he says, oh dear, do summer down, sirs, and thou, O oh wild one, who might thou be? And Gaw's just, thou? Thou, 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 and he's just jumping around saying, thou, 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 thou. <laughs> <laughs> he's just oh, annoying so him. Funny. And Cyan kind of turns away, like, and he's like, oh, are you angry? <laughs> Cyan, you angry me? You angry me? You, you angry, angry me? me? <laughs> he's like, listen, his family was just, you know, like, just chill, man. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, me understand, I'm sorry. God, not a mean person. God, not a mean person. <laughs> that whole exchange for a game that doesn't have very much room for text. I know. This is a this scene that could probably could have been cut <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Maybe it just shortened or something. <laughs> you know, there is, speaking of cut text, um, there is a, a bit of dialogue that's in the code of the game that, that did not actually make it into the final game. Um, and it is back with that old geezer, that old man who with, wants you to fix his stove and fix his clock uh, and all yes. that. Mm -hmm. There's a line here after we bring up, oh, this old man, he's acting like a child. And the guy's like, child nonsense. Um, and then uh, he actually says, uh, it, this line was cut, but he says, come to think of it, I spotted some weird child the other day when I went down south of here to the plane the other day. Got to be on your guard when you go through there. Mm. So there was a little bit of a of a hint, oh, yes. a hint towards this character we were right. about to meet that got deleted yep. from the final Interesting. game. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't feel like there's too much more to say here other than he talks about having like a treasure, like a special treasure. He yes. wants to show it to you. A treasure. So... You go with him, and it's it's a diving suit. So they all have these diving suits, so they can breathe well, while they I actually go have the a trench. lot to say about this. Okay. So maybe we should save it for later. <laughs> um, well, I was just going to say that we'll, we'll kind of leave it off where okay. they meet back up. The party is reunited in Narsh. But uh, yeah. uh, why don't you just go ahead with whatever you want to say about lot, actually. this? I've, I've got it, a few things. Okay, this is very good. Um, so Gao, first off, the line is draped. In monster hides, eyes shining with intelligence, a youth surviving against all odds. Mm. Gao. 
Um, and then also just wanted to throw out the, here the idea of Welt. Welt means world in German. Right. I don't know. Just like the land, whatever. Um, this new town is super cool. Um, we're going to talk about this maybe a little bit later, but there's a soldier there who's injured who gets oh, letters. Oh, yes. This is why you have notes. I, yeah. I didn't do this now. I saved oh, it for later in the Okay. The, but did you do the Gao um, going through the cave? With Gao getting the suit? Yes, getting yes, the suit. getting the suit, okay. yes. Then as for that, here we go. So, Gao is someone, you see his character, he kind of crouches and puts yep. his hands down. So, someone named Gao who crouches and is a wild lone barbarian who speaks improperly and who just lost something shiny in a cave. Uh, <laughs> is this a Lord of the Rings reference? Oh, right? I see where you're going with this, yeah. It's Gollum. So the kanji in Japanese that he uses for treasure, it also can mean precious. precious really? Literally precious. In fact, that kanji, if you, instead of doing the Japanese, if you take that exact character and you uh, translate it into Chinese, it, the first translation is precious. Wow. The very first one. Mm-hmm. And it's the same written thing. Now, of course, I'm not saying that it, it, there's a one-to-one between Chinese and Japanese, but that kanji means something along the lines of a precious thing, right? Wow. Um, so... It's really good. So it's, a, it's, a, it's his precious. Um, but later on, as when we find the thing finally, he says yes, and this is Tom Slattery's trans. Or sorry, this is uh, Ted Woolsey's translation. But it says yes with like five s's, right? Oh. So he's like hissing. Yes. Oh, is this your treasure? Yes. This Interesting. is clearly a Lord of the Rings reference. Wow. Clearly. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to put that out there before we ended the episode here. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. It turns out that his precious is this underwater diving suit, yeah. um, which is like, I, I guess Gao was using that to like swim around or it was just a shiny thing. He I, thought think, looked I, cool. I don't think he goes near the water because yeah. um, when Cyan and Sabin jump, he like lingers oh, for a long time. Right. And he's like scared. He yeah, doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't like want to jump in. That's right. So I, I would doubt that he well, would have actually also said gone in the water. The but. water is referenced. Someone in the town references that that river, the water that we jump into, is called like a, a snake, like the Serpent River. Or yeah, because yeah. it's really it's a meandering, windy river. Yep. Um, and you know there could also be some local like ideas of like you don't jump into that right that water right. But Sabin is Sabin, and he's a freaking beast, so he's going to do whatever he wants. Yeah. So science says <clears> these <throat> rapids look quite. Rapid. Ooh, rapid. <laughs> <laughs> and Saban says, no kidding, but it's the only way to make it in time to meet up with the others. In time. All right, yeah. let's go. What did you think about the way that the camera kind of like goes down the river? Yeah, as, like, as, as they're- In the like, world, like overworld POV view? Almost, dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah I would have liked it more if we could see our character instead. It was just kind of the camera. Yeah. Like yeah, I could see that. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Yeah. And so, you know, you fight some monsters as you're going through there. They can, Again, I think it's like yeah. the third time you see- if he's in the lead of the party, I guess Sa- a Sabin Sprite unconscious floating in the water. I know. They come Once up again. <laughs> near the town. Get Why does out. he always have to pass out <laughs> when he jumps into water? Like, he's not a good swimmer. He, swim? he is not a strong swimmer, it appears. <laughs> does not appear that way. Um, so then we go to a town called Nikea. Yeah. And I want to say that uh, Nikea, Nikea means victory in the uh, Greek. It's where Nike comes from. It's where Nike gets their... Um, their uh, name from, first of all, comes from Nikia, but also where they get the swoosh from. It, the swoosh is supposed to be uh, the shoes of Hermes, right? That mm. he had wings on his on his on, on his uh, feet, yeah. right? And so the Nike swoosh is um, referencing Hermes uh, and uh, Nikia, which is the Greek word. So interesting. Now you guys know about Nike. Um, okay, there's only one more thing I think that's worth bringing up. What's the man of the tavern? Funny. Uh, oh, the dancer it. at the tavern. Did you talk to the dancer? Yes. The little funny oh my scene God, that place. was so good. I loved it because Cayenne, of all people, she's hitting on Cayenne, <laughs> whose wife just died. And he's <laughs> he's the most honorable, like, you know, yeah. person around. And he's just like, you know, like, what is this, like, prostitute doing jumping on me? He's, like, so horrified that she would act this way. I loved it. I thought it was so funny. Yeah, so, hey, you handsome young thing. Why don't you come have a drink with me? Science like, how dare you? (laughs) (laughs) You licentious howler. (laughs) Off with thee. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, And the dancer's like, oh, don't be a stick in the mud. Just have some fun. Hey, uh, do you like these? I call this one Humpty and this one Dumpty. (laughs) Science like, Humpty Dumpty. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it should not have happened to a better character. It is so good. And I then, mean, yeah. Anyways, yeah, it's so. Funny. Sabin's like Cyan. You're too easy. 
And then Cyan says, thou art unaffected by these charms? <laughs> Savin's like, one of the benefits of all my years of uh, ascetic training. And the dancer says, oh, don't leave me standing here all alone. Anyway, it's just a funny little thing. Enough of that. So a proper funny. woman would have mo- should have modesty and decency. And <laughs> <laughs> rant, 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 rant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, so you go to Narsh from here. Yeah. And that's where we'll kind of leave it off. But There's another person at that tavern, that same tavern with the woman. It's an old man. Uh, but you talk to him and he says, there was once a man 13 years ago whose wife died in childbirth. The man thought the child was a monster. And nobody knows what became of the child, but oh yes, I think uh, I, th- I remember reading that just, too. Just yeah. might be he's um, in the room with you, <laughs> gal. <laughs> Anywho, um, he's right here. <laughs> and then you get on the boat and you see the yep. pixel the sh- boat sailing sh- along. Sailing. Ah, I love that. He's just like when you, if you go to an inn. I want to see my characters go yep. to the bed and sleep. Yep. Just like when I when we go to a boat, I don't want to just appear in the new board. No. I, I want to watch the this boat sail across. Sail across. <laughs> it is so fulfilling. It's really yeah. like it's really really fulfilling to see like the boat sailing and then porting and then boom, now we're there. Now we can do this. Yep. So that is that's that. Where we're gonna leave. So on. um. The next scene is going to take place in Narsh when everyone's reunited. They're going to try to go talk to the, um, go and talk to the Esper that's the there. Esper, that's right. Uh, the Empire will show up, try to like stop us from doing and so. We'll so there'll be a whole scene with that. And then you should play past that point uh, all the way through Zozo. There's a town called Zozo. It's a little yes. bit of a dungeon with a bunch of thieves who... They always lie. <laughs> and then after that is the opera, right? iconic, famous opera scene. And yeah. so play to the end of that. Basically where you should stop for next time is when, well, I don't even know if I want to spoil this. Just say the end of the it. opera. Yeah. The end of the opera scene where you're back on the world map again and you okay. can save. I'll Perfect. just put it that way. Perfect. Um, so there's going to be a lot to talk about next time. Mm-hmm. Like a lot. So look forward to that. Thanks, we everybody. We have to do a monthly video for Patreon now. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder. And uh, somebody had brought this up. I didn't read it at the time, but someone was saying a phantom train it reminds him of the uh, the train from Jacob's ladder. Ooh. So uh, maybe there are some parallels we can chat about as we do that. Uh, okay. But that's going to be a Patreon exclusive episode yes. for a few months. It will eventually go live. But anyways, we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace out. Peace.